morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. Welcome to Tony Commander J.R. Kubopa Chesson Talk Show. This morning we rise to the 26th day of the new year, January 26th. Another day in our lives. Let me put up my topics. We're running late. Let's get into my lesson. <clears throat> One, former United States Vice President Mike Pence. Two, can Liberia and Liberians survive George Weah's starting five? Three, restructuring everything Liberian. <clears throat> Let's get into my first topic. Former United States Vice President Mike Pence. This whole topic is about his lesson. What did we learn as Americans, as Liberians, as young men and women of the world? What did we learn from Vice President Mike Pence's experience? There are many things we have learned from him. One, you can't suck up the people. You can't praise people limitlessly. You can't give your heart and soul to anybody. Not for money, not for power, not for anything, racism, <clears throat> greed, nothing. And that what Mac Mike Pence did for four years. He sucked up to Donald Trump. Donald Trump could do nothing wrong that Mike Pence would object to. He praised Donald Trump like he was his lap dog. You couldn't trust Mike Pence to say anything against Donald Trump. This was the most loyal vice president a president could have wanted. What this made him do for Donald Trump? And that's the lesson. All oh, my people got to learn, man. Your integrity. Your trust. If you don't have your own, if you don't have your own integrity and pride, the only time integrity and pride is bad or are bad is when you take them and put them on your head and use it against other people like it's a treasure for you. That's when it's bad. But it's not supposed to be bad, man. It's not supposed to be bad. And what have we learned from Mac Pence? Look at after four years serving and being so, so sequious to a dictator. What has he 
benefited him. When the mob attacked our capital building, my pants was a target. Why? Because he refused to go against the will of the American people. And this was the only time he stood up to do the right thing. He was not going to change the will of the American people. And this was the only time he stood up against Donald Trump. He wasn't going to change the will of the people. And Donald Trump sent the mob to hang him. He didn't care. He didn't care about my pets. He didn't care. And all of us got to go through those lessons. Those are lessons of life we will learn. Even though you have seen this thing happen to my pants, it will happen to each one of you in your political lives, in your social lives, every kind of life you meet. You will meet people who you will be loyal to and they will betray you for little or nothing. <clears throat> and these are the lessons we learn in life. Now can Mike Pence trust anybody again? He had his all his hope on this president. And he was just as bad as him too. Doing all his lies, supporting all his lies, prepping up all his uh, uh, wickedness and his treacherous behavior against America and American people. Against humans in this country. Putting their children in cages and separating them from their families. That right now we can't find their mothers. That got to be extraneous measures taken to find the mothers of these parents, these children. How you take the children from their mothers and use the power of the United States of America to do that? The greatest country in the world because of who we are. And no matter what you say about America and American people, our doors are open. And that will make us proud to serve this country. Despite all the racism, despite all the hatred, despite all the negative things, we still got an outlet to be by ourselves. You don't like this crowd, walk away, go to your own crowd. You don't like this area, go to the next area. This is the goodness of America. I don't have to take your foolishness. You people won't run around with guns. I can go to another state. I can go to somewhere else where I don't have to confront idiots with guns walking around like this is the wild, wild west or some stupidity. I mean, what all that stupidness for? Open carry and all that kind of thing. Then you carry all these long guns all on your shoulders. For what? What kind of protection you want? I mean, this is just craziness. Now look at where it got us. Our country is totally confused. The Republican Party is self-destroying. I mean, Donald Trump has destroyed the mentality of the men in this party so bad that they don't even know who they are no more. They don't know who to respect. They don't know who to honor. They don't know who their leaders are no more. This way, this man will carry us to socialism. Who want to be sucking up the Donald Trump and useless Junior Trump and useless Ivanka? Who want to be sucking up to these children? The incompetent, useless people. The corrupt children. Never work a day in their lives. Come here, I'm talking about daddy this and daddy this, my daddy this, my daddy that. You know, just smack all of them pap, 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 and get in line. Go do some work. Put them in the fields and then pick some corns like our forefathers did. Let them know where work, real work where it is. You know, but you're the cause. From this apprentice show, you're the cause. I know it's a wild that show because I couldn't fathom how American professionals will sit down and let this idiot Donald Trump and his children demean and disparage them and their abilities. 
talking about he doing some show, apprentice show. I mean, what is this craziness? Now, what this show did, propel this idiot to the presidency of America because he had a lot of people worshiping him, thinking he was so great and bad. And he wasn't that great and bad. He was self-centered, egotistic, and just a little ball play with money. Believing he was this and that. Well, I see people playing with like, things like that. I don't do want to deal with those kind of people because I know what they carry us. Self-centered. Self-centered. And nobody can benefit from you. Now look at our country. The people seeing the butchers, the McKean's, Whitney, uh, Romney, all the respectable Republicans. They're saying they're not Republicans no more. They're not supporters of Donald Trump. They spoke up against the uselessness that happened on January 6th. So now the people fighting among themselves. Getting rid of all the respect, respectable leaders to follow people that Ted Cruz, Mark Rubio, Mitch McConnell, Jim Jordan, all the kind of people who back this man, <clears throat> this evil, wicked Donald Trump, who wanted to overturn our democracy to keep himself in power for life. And this idiot talking about when he finished, the next one will be Junior Trump. When he, when Junior finished, then that one will be up. And who will be sitting down and watching all you idiots? You hillbillies, follow the crazy people. Some of all got work to do. We got real, real hard work to do in this country. We don't just sit down and smoke bones and get up and just go run in the bushes and run in the river and go hunting and all the kind of, no, we got different kind of thing to do. Then you'll get pissed off. You don't want to go to school. You're jealous, you're in Africa. You don't want to go to school, you don't want to do nothing. Then you'll sit down there, you don't want to dream to be like Donald Trump. Then you'll say black people like that, then you see white people like that, that you're probably niggas, you know? They got white niggas and they got black niggas that were black niggas that attacked the Capitol building. The white niggas that attacked the Capitol building. Why? Because in every society, you got good and bad. You got people who feel left out for nothing. Same thing happening in our country. People feeling left out for nothing. Why? After all the years of, of benefiting from the wealth of America, after all the years of enslaving black people in America, after all the years of the negativities we have faced, we're not rising up to go attack the capital. All the demonstrations we've been having under Donald Trump, not one person got up to go attack the capital. No, 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 no. Why must you who ban the white people do it? Why would they do it? Millions of American people. Why would they attack our Capitol building? Destroy our offices. Make the Capitol building a crime scene. And the Republicans telling us we must come together and forgive it. How will you forgive that kind of thing, my people? Does that thing make sense? All of y'all begging for Donald Trump. When a criminal commit a crime, do you forgive him for unity's sake? Or do you punish him to set precedents, deterrence, and examples that this is not how we function? We are a law and binding nation and people. When people act like criminals, we punish them. We don't reward them to unite America? Are you crazy? Why would I want to unite with people who attack the Capitol building? Am I a dummy? Do I look Republican? Do I look confused in America? Do I look like I've lost my marbles? 
Do I look like I'm a communist? I will destroy my country. All the suffering we've been through. African Americans have not risen with their white brothers and sisters who, did, who joined with them to attack our Capitol building. Why are these privileged, weak, lazy people, privileged, feeling the entitled to go attack the mansion? Because it has been going on for years. 400 years, black people being treated like that. Every little thing we got, the white people, the jealous, lazy white people get up and say, well, you can have it and I can't have it. Let's go raid them. This thing be going over 400 years. And this is why Africa got to wake up. It's going on in Africa too. Now look at Donald Trump here sitting down telling us that you gave the white people their land back in Africa. After taking all the people land for years, suppressing us economically so we can't build the land. Then they come back and telling us, give the lands in Africa to the white people. Why? Why? Our educated people in Africa still do the same stupidness. Why? Nobody taking, telling you to take a gun against the white people. Nobody telling you we can't share the land. Nobody telling you we can't work together. But why must the white people always dominate everything for wealth? Destroy everything for wealth. Everything is greed, 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 damn greed. Why? Even the hillbillies rising up for greed. Lazy people don't want to work, don't want to do nothing. But everything the black people get in America, they jealous of it. Everything the slaves work and sweat for and get, they get jealous of it. They get jealous of it. <clears throat> Then the underbelly of white society rises up and come with all the weed smoking, all the sniffing, and then come to destroy black people's lives time and time and time again for four centuries. We had to leave America. My forefathers left America because of the same thing. We were on Thomas Jefferson Plantation. After we got our freedom, my people left and went home. We are tired cleaning people's boots. We are tired sleeping in the cold. We are tired. We are tired eating from the scraps of the table. So we got together and said, look, let's take our chances. And those of our fa white fathers who understood our plight set the path for us too. The church joined us. Bishop Finley and the Baptist Church joined us. And we're great people in fighting for us to go back home. Even our hitters, the slave master, they didn't want us here. They joined the movement, said, send these niggas back home. And we went home. We prefer to go home knowing that Africa had cannibals. They told us all of that in America before we left. Knowing that we were going to disease and sicknesses we were not used to. Knowing our lives would be in danger because we didn't know what we were going to meet in Africa. But despite all the ills, we are tired with freedom. I mean, we are tired with enslavement. We wanted freedom by any means necessary. And luckily, we have Paul Coffey, who was one of the few mulatto blacks who was a filthy, rich black man in America in the 1800s. Paul Coffey, the son of these rich entrepreneurs in America who had children by black women and left them their wealth, educated them. Paul Coffey was a sailor. And these were the people who participated in the emancipation of us going back to Africa. And look at how we suffered. Well, our African brothers don't understand this thing yet. yet. They think we just came there and overthrew them and killed them. You better wake up and smell the roses. 
or the feces, wherever we smell it in America and Liberia. Y'all know the suffering we went through? We went to Liberia in Africa without any support, without any power or strength, without anything, because we're tired with slavery. We're tired with the wickedness of the 50% of the people in America who attacked our capital building. We're tired with the way their fathers were treating us. Their fathers who wrote books, teaching their children how to enslave us. We didn't want to go back to Africa. We didn't know Africa. We didn't know what was going to happen to us in Africa. We knew there were no, there were no civilization coming out of Africa. Africa was dark. The only people who were in Africa were the British and the people who had exploited Africa and subdued the Africans. How did they subdue the Africans with the Gatling guns? People say, oh, how did they attack Africa? They weren't, going, they weren't beating Africa. The Africans were beating the British and, and the French and all of that. They couldn't capture Africa. You know how they captured Africa? They made the gun called a Gatling gun, that machine gun. You see the people in the movie turning that thing. That thing alone, you get five, six of them, you can wipe out a whole nation of tribes. And that had the Congo Africa. But it was physical, arrow, and that they bought the guns with those musket gun where you got a pump like that. They couldn't make it with Africa. But when the Gatling gun came up and they were making them in mass to go slaughter Africans, you know how many of us died? You all know how many of us have died in the war and still died? And we're fighting among ourselves. Now the same weakness after four centuries is coming back to America because we are getting diverse. We are America is growing into diversity. White children marrying black children, marrying Indian children, marrying Hispanic children, marrying Jewish children, blacks and white marrying. The barrier is broken. And the races are growing, mixed, and powerful. And these few 50% of the white people, they see their future fading away. Why do you think that attack was on the Capitol building? Because the racists, the privileged, the criminals, the corruptors of our constitution and laws that have been twisting there against black people from time in Memorial. Well, every time we fix the law and move forward, they change the laws, change the game for us. Now they can't change the game no more. Jesus Christ is tired. They sin against Jesus. They follow a money grabber, a man who lies every single minute. No truth can come out of your mouth. They follow him. And Jesus is tired. Jesus Christ is tired. America got to repent. And the more the wicked races try to keep fighting the system, fighting Joe Biden because he chose Kamala Harris, fighting because they fight black, they fight vice president female to reach that high standard is a black woman. So the privileged white, the whites who have read the books of their fathers for years, telling them how to enslave black people and keep us enslaved forever, are totally shocked because they know now they don't control shit. This is Jesus' world. It's not my world. It's not your world. We can't control it. This land was made for you and me. No matter how long it took us to rise and say, no, you can't take our wealth and just share among your children. Yeah, one time it was all right, but today it's not all right. Today we're more enlightened now. And all those of our brothers are now using the gift God gave us, gave us to stand up as men and women. We must take the lesson of Mike Pence, the vice president 
of the United States of America, the former vice president, as our lesson too. God gave us this lesson because he sent the pandemic in the world to stop the wicked people, to wipe out some of them too. So the world can know that nobody is powerful more than God. And God bless this nation. This nation has been a Christian nation for all. A Christian nation that encompasses all races and all peoples. And it's still a Christian nation. So how will Christians themselves rise up to join a liar, a racist, a hateful, wicked man to lead America because of wealth? Is that how Christianity works? The economy is more than morality, humanity, human needs, blessings of God. You lie on God. You lie for Donald Trump. I'm not going to be punished. I'm not, I didn't do all of that. I'm just warning you. And I want young American children, especially my white young children, to see this and understand why it's happening, why there's a need for us to punish Donald Trump, to punish Mitch McConnell, to punish Jim Jordan, to punish Ted Cruz, to punish Mark Rubio, to punish all the Republicans that are enablers of Donald Trump. We can't go on like that. People flip flop, look at, look at Lindsey Graham. He doesn't know whether he's Donald Trump's son or his boyfriend or his advisor or he's just sucking up. We don't know. This man is so confused. One minute he can't take it. He, he finished and the next minute, oh, oh like, you know, we got to stand together. We got to be united. You see a flip flopper like that. Does Jesus Christ have to come down to tell you this man is a criminal? This man is no different. Then George we are there. He can't be trusted. His ignorance of the law and decency and truth and veracity is so terrible that God is displaying his uselessness to us every day before the TV. He flipping and flapping and he been doing that all his life. But my, my time is over with this topic. But I just want you to know, my children, I brought it to you so you can see. This is Mike Pence's lesson. When you suck up to other people and forget who you are and lose your sensibility, lose your pride and dignity because you want to be in a group or you want wealth or you want future advancement of your profession or you you will stay in your job forever. These are the consequences you will pay when you lose your integrity, pride, dignity, and even family for wealth and prosperity and success. That is not true. Anything that is hateful to human beings or generates hit or acts that are not divine, are not the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ that propelled this nation to this place, that Donald Trump said he came to save. How you come save Jesus people with hate? How you come save Jesus people with their viceness? How you come save Jesus people with greed? All the people running behind Donald Trump are greedy people. They stole from America. They stole from poor Americans. And now they got to reap the consequences of their action. And as long as you fight the punishment of Donald Trump, America will drop and drop because it's not about y'all. It's about God. It's about the spirits of our fathers that have retained this country for so long Despite our diversities, despite our enslavement, America has been protected. 
by the same Jesus Christ that all of us got used to serving. Even the slaves. We took Christianity from the white people and took it to Liberia and that my faith. So when the same people who told us Christianity are the same people that condemned Jesus Christ and his teaching and deceiving their children to follow racism and hatred against any other race of people. Those people are bound for destruction. And if you don't punish Donald Trump, I may punish him. No pension, no future work. His children will be punished. All these senators, Mitch McConnell, all of them will be punished. Mitch McConnell ain't got no shame. He's just a useless old man for power. Mitch McConnell, you're a useless old man for power. You got all the power now. What does it worth? You destroying America. You destroying our democracy. You are all white men that have killed 400,000 American people because you won't follow this man. Now everything backfire on you and you won't take your hand out of it. You can't. You are an enabler of hit, of murder, of betrayal, of treason in America. And you are a wicked old man, Miss McConnell. Your white people scared to tell you that. The black people are scared to tell you that. But I am a Christian and I come too far to be scared of old useless men like you. You are a damn sinner, Miss McConnell. You are a traitor, Miss McConnell. And our children have learned the lesson of Mike Pence from all of you. The time of God's people in America is now. Aluta, continua. My young children, the leaders of our churches have let us down. The leaders who are supposed to teach us and inspire us and motivate us and incite us to move towards the Christian teachings that have been the foundation of America from its inception to today. Well, American Christians turned against Jesus Christ for Donald Trump. I will not be scared to tell you. I ain't backing down from telling you when you're useless. When the respect and dignity and pride we have always had in this country have been destroyed and, and damaged by Americans because of racism, because of hate, because of money, greed, corruption, immorality. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall learn. Just repent. 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 Our preachers cannot tell American people this. Our churches cannot tell American people this because they are the enablers of a corrupt, lying, evil man in America. So it behooves the downtrodden, the poor, the blind that has always been blind, that have always been laughed at, a man who can pass the bar exam, a man who ain't know nothing, can rise by the almighty hands of Jesus Christ and show the world that what Jesus Christ ordains, no one can destroy. Knowledge and wisdom and understanding comes from God. You can get all the education you want. You will never achieve knowledge. You will never achieve wisdom. You will never achieve understanding. Except it is divine. Aluta! My young children, stay on the course. Learn Mike Pence's lesson. Sucking up kills.
even put up my topic for my second lesson because this is another miracle that is happening in Liberia. Can Liberia and Liberians survive George Weah starting five? George Weah, Natalia McGill, Jefferson Cody, Prince Johnson, and who the last one I call? Mm, who the last one? Jefferson Cody, Jam Cody, well, you know the five I named there. So that the five, uh, George Weah himself, man. Why am I forgetting George Weah? Yeah, that is starting five. This starting five is the most destructible starting five in our native people history. They're smart, man. George Weah came and right in the midst of Liberian people, he flipped the game. Y'all still playing soccer, the man moving on to basketball. And y'all dummy people, y'all don't even understand the game. Y'all say y'all understand sports. Y'all got all the basketball people, y'all got the football people, the game flip on y'all. And y'all ain't even recognize it. Y'all were thinking, Joe, we are one 11 people. No, you don't need 11 people to play politics on y'all. The man using his starting five. And this dummy guy, y'all so confused in Liberia. Jeff Hartman controlling the whole Liberia. Five useless dummies got the whole Liberia upside down, changing our laws, lying in every every inaugural address. The same thing they just turn it around because after every year these these dummies lose their memories. When you got people, young children in the community, your nation is full of young people who are ignorant and only think about football. They forget there's basketball too. All of them, so football people, everybody, oh yeah, Manchester United, this United, that United, and they forget. Oh, since I mentioned basketball, let me stop right now. And let's just take a few seconds to pay respect to Kobe Bryant and his daughter. Today is a one year anniversary of the deaths. I will not too much into Kobe Bryant. After Jordan left the game, he just took my heart, my soul. I got no feeling for basketball no more after Jordan left. Because the caliber of play Jordan had in the game is unbelievable. Still, it wasn't about shooting. It was about everything. The guy was an all-around player. He could move to the ring. He could take four or five men up and challenge them at the ring. You don't see many of these boys doing it these days. They won't shoot from three points. Few of them won't go to the hoop. Johnny was all around, man. That was the most blessed guy in the game. So when he left, Jordan, if I ever meet you in my life, you got to pay me. You can't just come in my life and take basketball out of my life like that. And I can't like basketball no more. So let's take a few seconds, maybe one or two seconds, of silence just to remember Kobe Bryant. May his soul rest in peace. So this is what George we are doing to you. This is what George we are doing to you. He flipped the game on you. Five men ruling Liberia, stealing all the money and deciding how to strategize, fooling Liberian people. Had to tragedize writing bogus reports for this dummy to read. I can't call Joe We are president no more. He's a dummy. Look at our country suffering. This dummy leaving the country every minute to go to Ghana. Why is Ghana so important for our president? He's sleeping with all the prostitutes. That girl is a prostitute. She's a prostitute. They do all of that in the newspaper, put all the side in the newspaper, thinking her pride, go around telling people she got George We are baby. What, what, what kind of pride and dignity in that? You sleeping with somebody, husband. You go all around putting in the newspaper, you got her and what? These people are wyos. They are prostitutes. And our president is following a prostitute. He needs to be punished. We cannot punish uh, Donald Trump and leave George We are. George, we are going to step down from our government now. It's too much. 
We can't wait under 2023. We must rise up and demand that George Weah resign or the Senate impeach this dummy now. Our president is a hopeless, useless, womanizing, promiscuous dummy. And the women he following, that useless women, that useless women, all the decent women in Ghana who will keep their business private and secret. He going to follow the useless movie stars who ain't got no hope in life, just are money grabbers. Then you going to follow these people and got our nation in the dirt and in the mud and in the slum and in the brothels with this dummy. Then you're sitting there, President of Liberia, and you're sitting home. We have no food. Now one cent in our bank. Our children now in school. And you're sitting down and there's dummy going in planes that cause money running to Ghana in the night, in the day to sleep with Ghanaian movie star prostitutes. Are you people dumb or are you people just crazy? Our country are ruled and have nothing but dummies. Our country is dummy. So an illiterate man with an illiterate starting five can come and betray and lose and confuse and steal from the whole country. Where oh my, my Ellen Johnson said it. You think this thing wasn't designed to fool you? For a Harvard degree woman, a world experienced woman like Ellen Johnson said who going around spreading World Bank money all over Africa, controlling Africa economy with the World Bank, making you all look like a children, telling you all who she want to lead Liberia after George Weir. Are you people dumb? Or you're just used to smelly panties? Something got to be wrong, my children. Something got to be wrong with my country. And we got to face it. What's wrong with you dumb people? What's wrong with you people? Look at our country. It's by design. Ellen Johnson said he left her family and picked George Weir. It's not because she wanted you to have a superstar or you're you dumb, useless people. And I can't stop talking. Why would a Harvard graduate leave her party? and go to a dummy and bring him and show him to the world and say, this is the dummy I show to lead Liberian children into dummy nationhood. And she took this man. And in three years, our bank is broke. No money in the bank. Our schools are obsolete. No more schools in Liberia. Our people eating food from feces infested streets, flowing down our streets in our markets. The nation sewer systems have broken down completely. All the millions of dollars we have for our country in people's homes and they use as native foods, building colleges. They don't even know how to read and write, but they got colleges in their name. Can you help me, Jesus? Can you help me put some sense in my Liberian children? Because a lot of our nation and people are dumb. What is the problem? Let me get into my third point because there's no more wasting time. Restructuring. Everything in Liberia is connected to my second point. Our country is so destroyed. Everything in Liberia got to be restructured. Everything got to be reorganized. Everything got to be given meaning and structure and organization and leadership. Everything in Liberia from the president to the garbage cleaner to the Zogos, everything got to be organized and restructured. So you are telling me now, my diaspora Liberian children, how are we going to contribute to our country's redevelopment, progress, and advancement. Because all this bullshit we've been doing in America for the past 40 years is bullshit. How has it helped our country? What have Liberia in the diaspora really done to change Liberian people? What, our individual clubs, 
that useless damn Eula with all the native people in it from Liberia coming to America. Go look at Eula. Not even native people. You sit down, you talk with them, you think it makes sense to you. All they talking about Liberia and, and Liberia and Georgia and the country. That all. They have no concept that they're living in the greatest nation in the world. And the power of Liberian people collectively organized, directed. We're all rogues, man. We're all rogues. We got too many rogues among us. Even in America, we got the greatest rogue, rogue community in America. You can't trust Liberian people. If all of you are educated and we can't trust you, who will we trust to build a new Liberia? That's why I protect myself from the community. I can't live like that. You can't trust Liberian people. They tell you one thing, you know whether they're loyal to anything. They talk about principles then in their mind, all the thinking about what in it for me. What in it for me. If I don't find something in it for me, other people will mess me up. That's how we always think. Oh, look at the thing in it. They, they're trying to be smart. Because all of us are imbued with corruption. And when the whole society is corrupt, we don't trust nobody. And that was happening in America today. You see where it gets in America? The corruption has been too much in America. Why it being among most of the white people? Because they were all in the majority. Now that majority is being broken up. Because white tradition changed over the years, man. That slavery mentality don't mix today because even during slavery, there were white people who were in love with black people and they were destroyed because they couldn't show it. The majority of the white people didn't want it. So those few white people that love black people, that wanted to mix with them and marry them and have children with them, were denied that right. You see how racism is bad? Right now, in Liberia, there are Liberian people in America who want to marry white girls here. And your white girls, you're not be fool. These boys, they won't marry you, but they're scared. Because they feel they marry you, they will not rise in Liberian community. And that's not our law, man. You, you gotta get out of that mentality. Racism exists everywhere. Every group. We do it in different ways. You see? Don't let nobody stop your happiness, man. Don't let nobody stop your happiness. Laws are there to protect the masses, yes. But there's also tyranny of the majority. And you got to be mindful of that. Now, if you're not a man, if I wasn't a man, the tyranny of the majority of Liberian people would have destroyed me long ago. You think it was easy for me when they killed my pa and destroyed my whole family for me to get up and go to school every day, knowing that I had no food to eat, knowing that I had to walk everywhere I go because nobody would stop to take me because I was public enemy number one, and not because of desire to survive in Liberia. You got to be on the side with the president. So the president don't like something, and you like it, especially when the government killing you because you like people. You, because you're feeling sorry for people they're shooting you? I know. I was on my own. I was blessed enough just to be alive. You all know how petrified I've been all my life? When people come and overthrow my country, and overnight I become the enemy of my own people? You know how Mike Pence is feeling right now? That's how we felt. You know how AOC is feeling right now? That's how we felt. You know how all those senators that were bending down on the ground and scared for their lives and they didn't even get hit? You know how we felt? Who our parents were shot at the pool and we didn't know whether we were going to exist or not or whether we were going to be bludgeoned, bludgeoned to death by the masses of our people. You know how scared it was to go around and say, you chest and son. I had to face the music, man. I had to be a man. 
it wasn't easy for me. But you think I'm going to act the ass kid? No, I got Jesus. Come what may, I got Jesus. I wasn't scared of nothing. And you think I come this far to be scared of people like Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump, all these people? I'm not scared of them. And we can't be scared of them if you got the spirit with you. The Christians, I'm Christian. Why am I afraid of another Christian man? If he mess up, I'll tell you, mess up, Donald Trump. You're a useless man, Mitch McConnell. Who the hell are these people to make you scared of them because of wealth and power and money? They can't do nothing to you if the Christians and the lying and deceitful not look at our country. We got all our Christian institutions ruled by rogues, warlords, criminals. Our pulpits in churches have been turned into juju shrines. We all kind of turn under the pulpit. You can't trust none of the pastors in Liberia. Our country is juju infested. It's you to infest it. So what kind of Christian in Liberia can tell you anything right? Our country ain't moving nowhere. Our country now is selling nowhere. Because we are deceivers of ourselves. When we deceive ourselves, we deceive our people. Nobody can deceive God. Jesus Christ. You try that with Jesus Christ, you're a loser. Nobody can dis fool your shrine God. There are many gods, plenty, plenty of gods. Look at all you aliens visiting us. They've been visiting us forever. And some of them are God-like. They are not God. They are God-like. Because the technology and, and the advancement they bring from other worlds, we don't know it. And that way, if you go on, the history channel and see those phenomenon of phenomenal shows uh, about ghosts, paranormal things. You will see that aliens are part of it. You listen to Amy Allen in the gold file, in the ghost fire, in the dead files. She's one of the women. Because I watch that show all the time because I want to know what I know already exists. I ain't going to be no ghost hunter. I ain't that stupid. I ain't want to bring nothing home with me. I got enough shit in my life that need to be fixed. So I ain't want to bring nobody dead stuff into my life. So I watch them. Let them go and go hunting. I don't even like the ghost hunting. I like the real ghost stories. Like this uh, paranormal witness ghost uh, paranormal things called on camera. I like Amy Allen too because she is one of the only mediums who I've heard say that some of the people who are mysteriously invading people's houses are aliens. She says it on her show all the time. The last time she said, oh, four of them came in your room. They take them and carry them. And the people say, what they carry them? She said, I don't know. They take them and carry them and bring them back. They're not of this world. So when, if, a, if a medium who can see things, can tell you these things, that people come in and taking you away, she doesn't know where you're going. Even she doesn't know. So what did I tell you? We got mystical powers on this earth that come from aliens who are advanced. They come from aliens who want to control us, who want to have their way among us, who want to experiment with us. So there are so many gods. And when you open your mind to those things, you see the evil in people too. You be able to understand when they behave certain ways that it either supernatural or sickness Supernatural things can be sickness too. If you're not controlling yourself, if you don't understand what you're doing, and Donald Trump might be controlled by aliens, you never know that. Don't laugh. It might be the truth too. Look at how the man just came in, lie and lie and lie, and nobody 
stood up to her lies. How many lies Donald Trump told in this country? How many lies have our government official told us in Liberia? And every day we wake up, we say for peace sake, Oh, I want no fuss, man. You know, we can go on, man. Let's stop it, man. Just forgive the man. He he, that, that, he will get better, man. That's how we do. And I will expect our lives to change. Where everybody steal from us, steal from us, and we all will come with, oh, fuck, and then, no, man, don't do this, man. Then we wonder why we are banana republic. Why American, the white people, stand up for law and order and do what they got to do. But we are weak in our own minds and spirits to fight corruption because we are innerly corrupt. Why? Because the majority of the white people believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in God that you can read about Judaism. Look at the Jews. Buddhism. Look at the Buddhism. And they say that one of the oldest religion to a Buddhism and all of that. But those people have beliefs that they can read. Look at all the juju God. We can't read nothing. Prophet Key said to your aid. Prophet Key told you and, and he's not stupid. Yeah, he'll cuss and do it, all the foolishness. But Prophet Key teaches people too. He tell you that things not written down. You can't follow it because it get distorted. You go to a shrine, no Bible, nothing to read. How you build yourself? This man tell you something that come down from centuries to him. How you remember everything? How you will not help you for himself too? Look at all these juju men, they say women going to for children and power to keep their man and they got to sleep with you. You know how many people that man sleeps in? For those kind of powers? You don't know. You don't know. And you don't know what you're getting with you. Then the girl says you woke up with black snake and things like that. But those are lessons. We got people telling us on the internet. They may seem far-fetched, but they're not. They're not, they're realistic. They're realistic. People can appear to you in a way if they're in the darkness. If they're supernaturally dealing, anything can happen. Look at these shows, the scene witch filing on a broom in Mexico and all of that. Going places where planes can't go, just floating normally on a broom. They got those things in the world. And I want the people catching it on camera now. Camera. You see all kind of animals calling to people that cryptics, not of this world. Cameras catching it. You got their eyes more sensitive than we have. So these are the things going on in our country. And we gotta pay attention to our country. We can't have five people ruling our country. We can have our nation running amok and being destroyed. Everything we stand for, everything we live in, everything our people work for, our country is just gone. We got to restructure our country. We got to bring sense to our leadership and government. We got to bring life to our children. We cannot have an illiterate, an illiterate society again. We can't have our children out of school just for that reason. We got to get rid of jobs. We are now in peace. They man that he come out of our government. This man can be running behind movie stars and prostitutes in Ghana where our country money is being missing. Our children are out of school. We have nothing, nothing, nothing to protect us for our future. And my Ellen Johnson Sally sons and children owning everything in Liberia for themselves and our country is bankrupt that she telling us who she will bring to be president again she telling us that George Weir is opulent who put him there if you don't wake up if you don't wake up and he peace his dummy if you don't wake up and demand that this dummy resigns now 
there will be no hope for us in two or three more years. The dominant getting better. He feel flying over. What does we are going to talk to those people? He can't talk. What are you going to say? Sing? You will sing. He can't write. The people are in to write something now. What are you write? The man can't write. How you communicate with international people when everything comes to closeness and intimacy and you got to write letter to them? What joy we are will do? Spell backwards? Be writing Arabic to the people? Because the man can't write English, where well, he can write. Then this is the man our young children are proud about, talking about the president doing something for our country. My people, my young children, Jesus Christ does not come down to talk to us. My one hour is over. I got to go. Check yourself before you write yourself. Good night.